as you all aware the role of uh, a, definitely a common anti-inflammatory agent is always in our mind we as a practicing physicians always look after a product which is not prescribed by others or maybe prescribed by others but we have got a uh, broader way of prescribing this drug with a good result so when you all go through uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic, systemic disorder it is an inflammatory state also involves skin eyes it is a, a disease which involves many other part of our body it is a having a fluctuating clinical course as we have all experienced when we see our patient of uh, rheumatoid arthritis the presentation is different sometimes it is monoarticular sometimes it is polyarticular patient of early age group they are get involved with uh, rheumatoid arthritis the patient of later age group especially the women they get involved with rheumatoid arthritis so we never know uh, how it presents clinically we can't say they are the pathognomic signs of rheumatoid arthritis we have to go through our clinical experience considering our investigation and everything and uh, label these patient as rheumatoid or osteoarthritis it is associated with 60% increase in the risk of cvd related death uh, it is uh, sometime it is true complex and multi factorial pathogenesis because the pathogenesis of the body differs from patient to patient <clears throat> when you see a graph or a pictorial photograph of pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis there is a activation of macrophages by antigen presenting cells and t cells there is a release of inflammatory cytokines from macrophages that is tnf alpha and interleukin 1 TNF alpha and interleukin L leads to synovitis the initial stage of uh, arthritis the production of collagenase leads to destruction of extracellular matrix release of mmps leads to cartilage degradation and an advanced stage of arthritis when we see the osteoarthritis when you see the pathophysiology it is TNF alpha and interleukin 1 are the major cytokines involved in pathogenesis of osteoarthritis apart from TNF alpha and interleukin 1 There are elevated levels of interleukin 6, interleukin 17, and MMPs have also been shown to be implicated in osteoarthritis. So here we can also say that osteoarthritis definitely it is not an aging disease. It is an inflammatory arthritis which which affects few, not all the aging people, and not all the aging joints. So pathophysiology when we consider in rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis, you can see there are few common things. the tnf alpha and interleukin 1 are the major inflammatory cytokines involved in rheumatoid arthritis as well as osteoarthritis release of these inflammatory cytokines is regulated by nuclear factor kappa b nfkv this is an important diagnostic thing which has come now with the help of our uh, pathophysiologists they have found out that is a nuclear factor kappa that is nfkv is a very important diagnostic uh, factor which is available in common of patients of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis and this is a very important uh, tool to diagnose all these patients and to aim our uh, treatment for all these patients so nfkv is a transcription factor present in all cells nfkv plays an essential role in inflammatory and immune responses so when we <coughs> see all this there is a inflammation is always not on it is only the presence of nuclear factor kappa b which modulates the inflammation on and off factor so in many patients if the nuclear factor kappa b is is, uh, is present the inflammation gets on and it causes the symptoms of rheumatoid or osteoarthritis so the disorder due to nfkv activations are many they are rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis ankylosing spondylosis psoriatic arthritis juvenile ra they are always present with in our clinical practices and we aim to see all these patients and diagnose properly so the nfkv is the master switch of inflammation which we have to always keep in mind so activation of nfkv whenever it is there it causes the inflammatory stimuli it stimulates tnf alpha and interleukin 1 and many other cells and activation of nfkv itself causes causes translocation into nucleus and whenever this happens there is activation of genes encoding inflammatory mediators and there is a release of inflammatory mediators so these are the inducible enzyme which causes the disease to flare up like cox2 and ions etc so what is the outcome of nfkv activation is basically the synovial membrane which gets inflamed if the synovitis is uh, sustained for a longer duration of time there is a this crp is causing some inflammation in the connective tissues so 
whenever the curcumin was prescribed to all these patients, there was 52% reduction in CRP level with curcumin. It is effective and safe in patients with active rheumatoid arthritis. So it has got a potent anti-inflammatory action. When we see the evidence too, how the curcumin is uh, active in uh, rheumatoid arthritis, there was a pilot study which was done in 18 patients and they were treated for two weeks and the curcumin improved joint swelling, morning stiffness and walking time. Curcumin was very well tolerated with better GI tolerability. So inference is curcumin is effective and well tolerated in treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. When you see curcumin in osteoarthritis, there was a clinical trial of curcumin monotherapy. Only curcumin was used <coughs> alone for all these active patients of 820 number of osteoarthritic patients attending outpatient clinics were treated with curcumin for 6 months. And it has, well, it has been found that there is a significant improvement of pain, improved joint flexibility, better quality of life and 50% of patients were able to discontinue use of NSAIDs and analgesics. They were initially given some of the analgesic or NSAIDs, but later when we see the uh, rising titer of that come in, definitely take care of all your analgesia and you have to discontinue the NSAIDs or it is not required at all. Similarly, in osteoarthritis, there was 367 primary case of osteoarthritis with a pain score of uh, less than 5, were randomized to receive. There was a, uh, they were all treated and titrated with OMAC pain scale and it has been found that curcumin is an effective as NSAID but has better GI tolerability. This is also important. You have got many other drugs which are definitely having good pain control, good inflammatory effect but their GI tolerability is very poor. So curcumin can be definitely considered as a very good drug with better GI tolerability. The uh, Once again the same study was uh, carried out in 100 patients of osteoarthritis where the curcumin was given for 8 months and the result significantly decreases the inflammatory biomarkers, the interleukin, all separate biomarkers were titrated and seen, interleukin 1b, interleukin 6 who are all responsible for inflammation in the joints they were all get reduced or there was a significant reduction in their serum level. There was more than 50% decrease in OMAC score of all these patients. There was threefold increase in treadmill walking performance. They, these patients were put into exercises tolerance and it was seen that they can definitely do a good treadmill exercises. So curcumin is effective and safe for the long term management of osteoarthritis, what we normally uh, plan for. We definitely plan for a drug which can be given for a longer time, having a good uh, tolerability, no side effect, can be taken alone or with uh, some ansets and curcumin definitely uh, signifies its presence. Curcumin was also uh, used with diclofenac. There were another study which says there was 88 patients which were given uh, diclofenac uh, with curcumin for 3 months. As, as compared to diclofenac monotherapy, the combination of curcumin with diclofenac was uh, associated with greater pain relief. There was a great, particularly useful option in following group of patients like the patient who are intolerant to NSAIDs, steroids and DMRDs because whenever the patient comes to a specialist, he has already consumed many of the NSAIDs having lot of gastritis and other disorder. You need to choose your patient in a very uh, particular or a precise way. So this concoming therapy will definitely going to help all these disabled or hepatic dysfunction, kidney dysfunction patient can be greatly prescribed these drugs even with the patient uh, of the patient of CV disorder, hypertension and CHF, we can definitely consider this curcumin uh, therapy. So if it is effective, safe and well tolerated treatment options and let us make life pain free, that is our aim. We as orthopedic surgeon or physician definitely want to, 60% uh, of our uh, practice definitely leads to provide good relief of pain and we definitely wait for this curcumin therapy. This is just a sharing in my own way of my experience of uh, treating all this patient whenever a patient of polyarthritis or a patient of osteoarthritis come to my clinic I consider his age, sex and his physical condition, how he is living I go through a arthritis profile I do my uh, weight bearing x-rays of joint to see the osteoarthritis prescribe the drug which is definitely suitable to him or considering his physical fitness or uh, tolerability to drug I plan my therapy I go for uh, lifestyle modification 
and uh, definitely ask my patient to do a lot of physiotherapy, go for, for, go for some physical therapy treatment and try to prescribe drugs which are well tolerated. So definitely as a clinical physician, I wait for these drugs to arrive. Curcumin is a definitely a good drug and we all wait for this.